The first hidden features are how to actually get into some of these secret menus. Now, if you go to your wearable app on your phone, tap on settings, then about, then tap on Galaxy wearable five times. This will show you some hidden settings, which we're going to explore in just a moment. Next up, if you're having issues with your sensors or your display is malfunctioning, you can open your watches dialer and type star hash zero star hash, and then you'll enter a secret service menu. Now this will give you access to various buttons you can tap in order to check if there is anything wrong with your display or your sensors or your speakers and so forth. Speaking of secret menus, with the settings app open, scroll all the way down and tap about watch, then tap software info, look for the software version option and tap it a few times until you see the developer mode turned on pop-up message at the bottom of the screen. This will give you access to even more hidden features, some of which we're gonna talk about in just a moment. But first, let's talk about some apps. Now here is an app that uses the sensors in the Watch 6. It's called ThermoCheck, and you can use the watch's infrared sensor to check the temperature of your surroundings. Like if you've ever wondered what the temperature of a pool or the sea is before diving in, this one comes in real handy. Just be careful not to drop your watch into the ocean in the process. Now you can also use this new temperature sensor to measure the temperature of your coffee or a grill to see if it's hot enough to cook on, and just loads and loads more. Another app which unlocks some extra really useful features here is one called Camera One. Now install this on your phone and your watch, and now you can use your watch as a remote control for your phone's camera. Now, if you have the Watch Classic, then turning the bezel makes the camera zoom in, zoom out. You can also switch lenses, record videos and snap photos with or without a self timer. If you have the SmartThings app on your watch, you'll be given access to the device control tile, and you can use this to control a Samsung TV, to control the volume, turn it on, turn it off, change inputs. Really, really handy if you ever lose the remote control. This next one is one that saves me time every single day and saves a little battery life too. Now, if you head into the Play Store settings and tap on Auto Update Apps, then afterwards, head to the Developer Options, which we unlocked earlier on, tap on Enable Wi-Fi when charging. Now, this will let your apps auto-update whilst you charge your watch. Next, to get notifications read out to you via your Bluetooth headphones, simply go to Settings, then Notifications, then Advanced, scroll down to Read Notifications Allowed, and tap to turn on this feature. Now, this can be a really useful feature if you've got a pair of Bluetooth headphones hooked up to your watch and you don't have easy access to the screen to see your notifications. For example, like during workouts, like now messages will be read out to you mid-workout. Next up, under accessibility, then advanced settings, turn vibration watch on. Now, whenever you place two fingers on the watch's face, it will vibrate the time to you. Like now you can check the time whilst you're in meetings without being rude and just looking straight at your watch whilst someone's mid-sentence. Number 11, us Android users already know that we can use reverse wireless charging to charge the Galaxy Watch. But if you're in a rush and actually need to speed things up, you can actually plug your watch's charger into your phone and your phone will now charge your watch at double the speed compared to wirelessly charging it. Now, one thing that I always encourage people to do is stop using the built-in Samsung or Google or even Apple password manager, which comes installed by default on your phone. Now, firstly, because once you're in the Samsung or the Apple or the Google ecosystem, it's pretty hard to actually access them when you're not using one of their devices. And secondly, because these systems typically don't let you store much beyond an actual username and password. Keeper have recently shipped a ton of new features in their latest update to their password manager, one of which is passkey support, which is basically the future of what passwords will be. But this aside, Keeper is a rock solid option for those who want to securely access their usernames, their passwords, and their other data from any device anywhere in the world. So simply sign up using the link down below to get started. And a huge thank you to Keeper for sponsoring this portion of the video. Next up is a feature that allows you to scan an eSIM QR code, even if your phone is on a different plan. Now, if you go to your wearables app, tap on settings, then about, tap on Galaxy wearable five times and enter the hidden settings, tap the test eSIM feature, then tap current QR test mode off to turn it on. And after that, when you select mobile plans under your watch settings, it will bring up the QR code scanner regardless of your phone's provider and your plan. Like using this, you can add a standard loan plan or data only one, even when it's on a different network to your phone SIM card. Next up is to maximize your use of Galaxy Watch with Samsung Health on your TV. Now, if you go into Samsung Health, scroll down to the bottom and hit settings, share data with devices and services, scroll all the way to the bottom and tap on TVs, then enable heart rate and calories. Then you go back and into make visible to other devices. Now you can fire up Samsung Health on your TV, pair your watch, 
and you can access a library of workouts where you'll be able to view your heart rate and burn calories on your TV whilst working out. Next up, if you're in a bit of a panic and you need to calm down or control your breathing, you can fire up Bixby and just say, start breathing. Now this will automatically pull up a simple breathing exercise, which you can then follow to hopefully calm and relax yourself. And if you get frustrated with the speed of your watch at times, you can go into the developer settings, which we enabled earlier, and head to animation speeds. Try changing this to 0.5, which reduce all animations by 50%. This should make your watch feel much faster as the animations are now much faster than they were before to hopefully make your watch feel even snappier. Next, if you have any other Samsung or SmartThings devices around the house, you can use these SmartThings tiles to control multiple Samsung devices all at once using just your watch. So just scroll to the end of your tiles and you can add a multi-control tile. Use this to switch your lights on and off, control colors, control your air conditioning, or even accessing a Samsung fridge all at the same time. Kind of makes you want to buy just a ton more Samsung products, but not quite sure my wallet will survive. So uh, quickly moving on. Next, if you go into developer settings and switch on stay awake when charging, you can leave your watch display on whilst it charges, effectively turning it into a clock. Now this can be great if you want to say charge your watch while sat at your desk during the daytime and still want to use it as a clock or to use it at night if you really, really want to, though it might be a little bit too bright for most people. Next is something that is well worth checking and that is your notify when left behind settings. And this notifies you when you leave a device behind you, which by default, for some reason, were disabled on my own watch. And this works similar to Apple's Find My, where it allows you to find your devices even when they don't have any phone signal. Now on your phone, open up the SmartThings app, then head to Life, then tap on Finds. Now find each device you want to be notified, go to More, then check the Notify when left behind settings. And whilst you're here, it's also worth going into the app settings, allow devices to be found, and check that offline finding is enabled for any available devices. Next up, head into the Google Maps app on your watch, tap on mirroring, and as you can see, the watch will mirror your phone when starting navigation. But if you scroll down, you'll also notice it's actually disabled for each of the modes. So toggle on all three if you wish, or just one or two. And now anytime you navigate in Google Maps on your phone, your watch will automatically kick in, and if you're either driving, driving, walking or cycling, it means there's practically no reason to look at your phone anymore. Next is one of the most frustrating things on the Watch 6, it can be when sending messages. But if you head into your settings, general, input, then tap on Samsung keyboard. And I want you to do two things here. Firstly, enable the keyboard swipe controls, then also enable double tap spacebar to add a full stop. Now you can swipe away to type and double tap to add a full stop for much faster messages. If you want even more tips for all your Samsung devices or want to know more about the latest Galaxy flips or folds or other smart devices, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.